a lot of conversation about running out has been, everyone's like, we're gonna run out of oil, we're gonna run out of natural gas. What is the uh, supply, what does the supply story look like for the next you know, couple generations? Yeah, you know, this is a, a big topic even in the oil and gas industry, because as I told you, we're going straight into the shale, so we're going straight into the source truck. After that, there is no more oil and gas. That is where the hydrocarbons cook and originate at. And so, um, you know, we chewed through a lot of the tier one inventory in shale in the early days, made a lot of mistakes in it. Now we're moving into tier two, tier three inventories. And so, you know, what is, what is peak oil and gas? Um, you know, anytime someone talks about peak oil, one, are we talking about peak demand or peak supply? In this conversation, we're talking about peak supply. supply. We have so much oil and gas on this planet, it is almost impossible to comprehend. We just talked about the guy on a discovery. That is a massive producer in its own right. And so I don't think anyone can sit here with a straight face and tell you definitively of when uh, peak supply will be. I know from a natural gas perspective, I mean, we have enough to last us centuries. Um, it, it's a huge amount. And then as we move forward into the future, um, something I've been diving a lot into is the future of synthetic hydrocarbons. And so there's already a lot of companies out there that I'm friends with that are looking at, okay, how do we make hydrocarbons in a lab? So part of this could be using heat to dissociate CO2 molecules and break them down and turn it back into a hydrocarbon, which that's really enabled by the rise of nuclear and being able to use heat from nuclear to do that. Um, I have friends that are using biological methods to go into uh, reservoirs and take uh, residual natural gas and turn it into hydrogen. Um, they've also partnered up with Oxy has a CO2 injection uh, project. They're taking that CO2 and they're cooking in the reservoir to take that CO2 and turn it into ethylene. And so the thing is with these uh, synthetic hydrocarbons is you can actually make pure higher density fuels um, in a lab. And that technology is really developing. And much cleaner, I imagine. Much cleaner, it's burns cleaner as stuff. well. Yep. Yeah. And so I'm actually a big believer that we'll be using hydrocarbons for the next several centuries um, at minimum. And especially as we get into space exploration, colonization, um, industrialization, you need hydrocarbons to get to space. You need it for rocket fuel. And then once we get up there, you're gonna need, you're gonna need to get back. And you just look at the, the resources that are in space. You know, Titan is a moon where it rains hydrocarbons. They have oceans of methane. And so you think that we're not going to tap into that when we're into space colonization.